Time-based correctors. What the hell are they, and when do you need them? For glitch art. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you refuse to accept the fact that most information that's relevant to analog video glitch art can only be found on obscure old video forums and websites. But you're in luck, because I'm here, and I'm trying to keep things dead simple and particularly relevant for analog video glitch art. This is supposed to be just practical knowledge. It's not going to be super like scientifically educational or technical or anything like that. Um, so yeah, in my last guide on analog glitch visual capture methods, I mentioned a few times the term time-based corrector, which I kind of glossed over and I didn't really explain what that is. So that's my bad, but don't worry. It's not as scary as it might sound. Time-based correctors are things that look like this on eBay. They can be rack-mountable ones that used to exist in TV stations or in studios, uh, or these smaller boxes, which were more meant for prosumers at home who wanted to digitize their tapes with the most stability or something. Probably the same types of people who made posts on those obscure video forums. And these time-based correctors already exist in analog video mixers. So if it's one of those things, or it has time-based corrector in the title of it, and it has an analog input and an analog output, the circuit inside of it will automatically stabilize your analog video signal when it's going out. What exactly do I mean by stabilization? Well, if you're using any video device that is circuit bent, meaning it has knobs on it, that weren't originally there, like somebody added them or you added them, then you more likely than not will need a time-based corrector on the output of that device before you send the signal to a projector, uh, a flat screen TV, a capture card or an upscaler, basically anything that isn't a CRT TV, like what's behind me that will almost guarantee you're not going to get a blue screen of death or a black screen of death or a color bar screen of death or simply a no signal screen of death. This is especially important if you're doing any really hard video glitches, especially the ones that seem to tear or shred the video signal or mess with the sync signal so bad that it starts scrolling or the video signal looks skewed or something. There are times when a time-based corrector is not necessary, in quotation marks. But that's just if you're not doing any signal distortion to your video. Feedback loops created by mixers or cameras or enhancers are okay. You don't really need a time-based corrector for those. As well as any undistorted, normally functioning as intended, analog video gear and devices in general. But before I get into my demo, let me tell you why time-based correctors are generally not needed if you're just going straight into a CRT TV. And that's because I like to think of these TVs as things that will display whatever the hell you tried to give it. In these TVs, there's no analog to digital conversion happening. The signal is literally just going straight to the cathode ray gun which is constantly firing electrons and scanning across the screen really fast. And frankly, it just doesn't care how badly screwed up the video signal might be because it's still gonna keep firing electrons. If your CRT screen is giving you some kind of signal blanking, then you probably have the option to turn it off in the menu and you definitely should turn that feature off uh, because it just makes no sense when you're doing glitch art. All right, so this is my analog video setup, and I have three video mixers from different brands, and they each have a time-based corrector built inside of them. I also have a standalone rack mount time-based corrector, but before I show you how each of these uh, corrects video signals, I'm going to show you 
uh, how it looks on a CRT screen by default, which is going to show us the truest look of how a glitch um, looks. What I have set up here is the world's most basic video circuit. It's literally me taking the output from this camera right there and the output from my downscaler which is connected to my computer which has this image of a of a cloud on it which you see right now and they are being input into here and through literally alligator clips I have clipped them to a single potentiometer which is has the value of like I don't know 10 cents if even that uh, and the output of the potentiometer, which is just a variable resistor you can turn to decrease and increase the strength of each signal, um, going to the CRT screen. So right now, as it's turned all the way to the right, I'm showing what's on the computer. As I turn it to the left, I'm fading in the camera signal. And as I go in between, back and forth, we have this wonderful dirty mixing video uh, in between. So this is the world's most basic analog video glitch circuit. You have it right here. It does not take very much to build and if you ever see it being sold for like a hundred dollars in an enclosure on eBay, um, well, just know that the internal parts are not worth that much. I'll leave it at that. Now I've taken this circuit and connected it to a projector, which in our case is going to be our example of something that is not a CRT TV. We're going to see how this projector reacts to me slowly turning this knob, um, which as you saw looked very fluid on the CRT screen but we'll see how it reacts on something that does some conversion. It's doing a pretty good job so far, but if I leave the knob kind of gradually touch it, you'll see we start losing some frames. Um, and there we go, we've got the blue screen and then it's now trying to look for uh, a, a source. And if I kind of just leave it as it is, Again, you'll see it starts to really glitch out and does the blue screen again. So this is uh, what happens when you take a distorted video signal and put it into something that is not that right there. So now we're going to see what happens when we put one of these mixers or time-based corrector in between the output of this and the projector. To start, I've put the SEMA SFX9 video mixer in between, and I'm doing this one first because this one uh, and, and other SEMA mixers tend to have the best built-in time-based correctors, as in the most true to the real glitch uh, kind of look, where it doesn't try to do anything special, it just preserves the glitch and but gives it uh, a stabilized signal that the projector can interpret so we'll see that in action right now as I turn the knob you're not going to see that same kind of glitch or dropout that we saw when we didn't have a time-based corrector and it's doing a very nice job of handling the glitch no dropout at all I'm gonna turn the knob back to the cloud image You'll see there is just like a slight amount of stutter, but that's just kind of the nature of the glitch. And overall, this SEMA mixer is a really awesome uh, device for just time-based correcting in general. Next, I have the Panasonic WJAVE7, which really goes for any of the WJAVE series mixers. I think this is an example of a mixer that actually makes the problem arguably worse. This is way different from anything uh, that we saw in the other examples. Uh, and I don't know if it's because my mixer is defective. Next, I have the Ederol V8, 
And the Ederol V4, which is more popular, also applies to this. And this mixer, I think, has also some issues um, when it comes to time-based correction. So I'm going to start turning the knob and we'll see how it does. And yeah, it really is stuttering. Um, and it's not showing anything at all. This is where the knob is turned at. So we're not getting any signal, period. Uh, but when we turn it back, it does, does show um, what it's getting. But yeah, this is why, uh, this is what they don't tell you about these mixers is that the time based correctors uh, for distorted signals coming in is definitely not the best, even worse than this one. Um, definitely nothing compares to this one. So there is the possibility of going into the menu and strengthening it such as, if we can find it, utility, and then video sync threshold. And I think if you go into the negatives, it actually gets stronger. This number doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know what it means. But I've made it as strong as it can be. And I'm going to turn the knob again, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we even got, like, a blue frame. Um, but... To be fair, at the very least, we're not getting any uh, dropped frames for the projector. At least not confusing the projector in such a way that it's searching for another source. So now, finally, I have my rack mount time-based corrector. And this one, well, just see for yourself. It does a really awesome job at keeping the signal stable and as well showing the glitch itself. Now I actually think it looks uh, a little more smoother than it should. It, it's, it's, I think it's really doing the best that it can to correct this dirty mixed signal, um, but Again, these things are designed to be rock-solid time-based correctors uh, because they were at TV stations. So um, it's going to do as much as it can to correct whatever glitches it's receiving. Um, but you can still get some really awesome uh, textures. And, and I'm using this circuit, this dirty mixing circuit, as just a basic example of video distortion. There's a lot more complicated effects uh, and harder effects that you can get using circuit bent devices like this. Another thing I wanted to say is these are just three mixers that I have. There's still other mixers out there, um, notably the Videonix MX1. So yeah, this is why CRT TVs are generally the best for uh, analog video glitches. So um, because you don't need a time-based corrector. So I hope this demo was helpful and uh, enlightening. Some people will talk about time-based correctors when it comes to digitizing VHS tapes and other things, but honestly, that's not, you know, something you really need to worry about. A lot of the times VCRs have time-based correctors built inside of them to stabilize the signal that's being generated by the spinning tape. Um, it's physically reading which is pretty necessary because it's a mechanical device and there's bound to be like little fluctuations in, in how it reads the signal. Um, I hope that this clarified some things about time-based correctors, especially if you're new-ish to analog video art or if you're just kind of confused. Um, so yeah, it's, it's dumb to just have to dive into obscure forums and websites all the time to find basic information or through those long-winded videos from these really tech-minded people who it wouldn't even occur to them that glitches might actually be desirable for some people. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm trying to fix that for this little niche and for whoever may be interested. So that's all I have. Stay safe out there, be creative, and uh, peace out.